Okay, finish one your of point, the reasons, then we'll give Khalid a chance. If you, if, you are a, if, you are, if you are a Muslim, you may decide not to do that. However, in countries like Britain and France, most of us are not Muslims. And we do not believe in Muhammad as the founder of, of the, any faith that we follow. People are Christians, atheists, all sorts of things. You cannot expect, and this is a crucial thing, Muslims should not expect non-Muslims to abide by their own belief systems. You can yourself decide, you as a Muslim do not want to depict Muhammad. But the idea that is coming along in Europe at the moment is a growing idea that people who are not Muslims, who do not believe in Muhammad, who do not follow Islam, are also to be, um, uh, have to obey the rules of Islamic blasphemy. And right. in Europe okay. at the moment, okay. that You've is the that, big debate. You've made that point. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we are here again with another video from Douglas Murray titled... Al Jazeera host tries to counsel Douglas Murray about Islam. Wow. Get destroyed instead. Wow. We all know Douglas is a very articulated person. He's always sincere, always stand for the truth. So I believe this is going to be another interesting one. Let's check it out. Go. Right, right. Okay, let's bring in uh, our London guest into the discussion at this point. Do you think this attack will underscore the message of the far right in Europe, at least, of the incompatibility of Islam and the West or Western values? That's a pretty atrocious question, if I may say so. We're about 24 hours away from 12 people being gunned down in a newspaper office in the centre of Paris in a European city uh, because they offended, allegedly, Islamic blasphemy laws, blasphemy laws which France, Britain and other European countries do not have and do not believe in and do not follow. And for you to turn the question immediately, not on the people who've been massacred because of asserting their rights as European French citizens, but on to the alleged uh, uh, terrible discrimination of the French is really quite despicable. So I didn't ask you anything about discrimination of the French. Let me repeat the question. You went straight on. You went straight on to. You went straight on to the alleged let, backlash. Let me, let me let me ask you the question again, in case you didn't understand it. Do you think this attack? We are in our news bulletins talking in more detail about the actual attack. What you were invited to discuss in this show are the implications of what might follow the attack. Will it underscore yeah, and, the and message of those who, who say there is an incompatibility between Western values and Muslim values? No, you, you, you want to paint the narrative which you think turns immediately, not from the attackers, but I on want the French an answer, society, sir, that's which all. you would like to portray. I'm giving you my answer, so why don't you listen to it? Which you would like to portray as somehow anti-Muslim or anti-Islamic or anything like this. Let's start from the fact that 12 people were massacred because European citizens asserted their right, which they have every right to do, to draw Muhammad just as they have the right to draw any other historical figure, which they believe in or don't believe in, it doesn't matter, they have that right. I, I, I don't think at this stage whether, you know, a discussion of the far right in France or anything like that is really the point. The point is people were killed and gunned down for doing their job as journalists and cartoonists in a free society. Douglas Murray's confrontation with the Al Jazeera journalist highlights a critical issue that often gets sidelined in mainstream media discussions, the reluctance to directly address the threat posed by radical Islamist ideologies. In the interview, Murray pointedly critiques the journalist for shifting the focus from the immediate problem of radical Islamic terrorism to the broader and less relevant issue of right-wing extremism. This kind of deflection is not only unhelpful, but also dangerously misleading. In our current media landscape, there is a pervasive fear of offending Muslim communities or being labeled as Islamophobic. This fear often leads to a diluted and indirect discussion of the real and present dangers posed by radical Islam. Murray rightly calls out this tendency, emphasizing that by not addressing the core issue head on, we do a disservice to the victims of such attacks and fail to confront the ideology that fuels such violence. The crux of Murray's argument is that radical Islamist terrorism is a unique and significant threat that needs to be acknowledged and addressed directly. While right-wing extremism is indeed a concern, it is not the same as the global and organized threat posed by radical Islam. By conflating these issues, journalists and media outlets risk minimizing the specific dangers of Islamist extremism and hinder efforts to combat it effectively. Moreover, this kind of media deflection undermines public trust. 
When people see journalists avoiding the real issue or downplaying certain threats to avoid controversy, it erodes confidence in the media's ability to report honestly and fairly. Murray's insistence on addressing radical Islamic ideology directly is not about promoting bigotry, but about ensuring that we can have a truthful conversation about one of the most pressing security issues of our time. Okay, let's try with our guest joining us from France. Perhaps she would like to address the question. Do you think there is a message coming out of this, of the incompatibility of, of Muslim and Western values? It seems our guest in London doesn't want to uh, tackle that. Perhaps you would. I think that's what the killers would like us to believe. <laughs> They're French. They were, they were brought up in this country. And they made this choice to become what they've become. They've killed a policeman, for example, who was also from an Algerian background like them, French citizen as well. So I think this is not the issue, and this should never be the issue. This is the issue they want us to address, and they want to make that statement that uh, there is an incompatibility between two worlds. I think they are extremists and I think we should not let other extremists on the other side who believe that as well, like uh, our extremists here from the right wing or extreme right wing, uh, who believe that there is an incompatibility between an Islamic world and, an, and a Western world. I think we should never allow this, uh, this question to be put. All right, thank you very much. Douglas in London, no doubt there will be a lot of thought as to how to how policy should proceed going forward what do you think the policy should be what are the the practical policy lessons learned from this attack well there are no practical policy uh, lessons learned people are still mourning the dead and uh, identifying bodies um, the thing that is going to happen in the weeks and days ahead is that people are going to have a set of questions. The first will be obvious security questions, simply about how it was that two people were able to go into the office in Paris with Kalashnikovs and gun people down in cold blood. That will certainly be a part of it. There's a technical security discussion to be had. There's also a discussion about wider society and, and what its reaction should be and all that sort of thing. But really the most febrile and important discussion at the moment is the one that the free press is having across Europe, which is, uh, which is whether or not uh, they will stand up and retain the right to do what we in Europe and free peoples have the right to do, which is to draw what we like. And the key message from this really can't be emphasized enough because, you know, uh, uh, your, your guest in, in, in Doha is a cartoonist. He knows very well that he can't draw a cartoon of Mohammed there. Even if he wanted to, he wouldn't because his I life would be anyways. at great risk. I wouldn't, and, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, do that you wouldn't anyway, do it. sir. No. And one of the reasons, no, it's, it's, and one I, of the I reasons think, you I wouldn't think, do it, I think, okay. sir, I maybe th it's I think, not just because, let, let can I just finish my point? Uh, okay, finish One your of point, the reasons, that will give Khalid a you, if you are a chance. If you are, you are a Muslim, you may decide not to do that. However, in countries like Britain and France, most of us are not Muslims. And we do not believe in Muhammad as the founder of, of the, any faith that we follow. People are Christians, atheists, all sorts of things. You cannot expect, and this is a crucial thing, Muslims should not expect non-Muslims to abide by their own belief systems. You can yourself decide, you as a Muslim do not want to depict Muhammad. But the idea that is coming along in Europe at the moment is a growing idea that people who are not Muslims, who do not believe in Muhammad, who do not follow Islam, are also to be, um, uh, have to obey the rules of Islamic blasphemy. And right. in Europe okay. at the moment, okay. that you've is the that, big debate. You've made that point, Douglas. I completely agree with Douglas Murray on this one. It is unreasonable to expect non-Muslims to conform to Islamic standards of behavior, particularly regarding issues like the ridicule of religious figures or criticism of religious doctrines. Freedom of speech, including the right to criticize and satirize, is a fundamental right in Western democracies. This right is essential for the health of any free society because it allows for open debate and the questioning of ideas, which are crucial for progress and enlightenment. By insisting that non-Muslims refrain from any form of criticism or ridicule of Islam or the Prophet Muhammad, there is a risk of undermining these essential freedoms. Murray's point is that while mutual respect is important, it cannot come at the cost of sacrificing the fundamental freedoms that define Western civilization. In a pluralistic society, no single religious or ideological group can have a monopoly on what is considered acceptable discourse. Moreover, Murray suggests that this expectation of conformity to Islamic standards is not only unrealistic, 
but also counterproductive. It can lead to resentment and a sense of injustice among non-Muslims who feel their own rights are being curtailed. This tension can exacerbate divisions within society and hinder the integration and harmonious coexistence of different communities. Murray also touches on the broader issue of how society should handle offensive speech. In Western tradition, the response to offensive speech is not violence or censorship, but more speech. This means countering ideas with better ideas, engaging in debate, and using the power of persuasion rather than coercion. This approach not only preserves individual freedoms, but also fosters a more robust and resilient public discourse. It's about upholding the principles of free speech and ensuring that no group can impose its religious or ideological norms on the wider society. This is not about promoting disrespect or intolerance, but about defending the freedoms that allow diverse societies to thrive. Wow. What an interesting debate. You can tell this was really, really heated to some extent. And I kind of relate with uh, Douglas Murray point of view. Uh, you don't expect everyone to conform to your religious norm, to your religious belief. And you don't have to resort to violence because someone is trying to express his freedom of speech. Someone is trying to express his freedom of expression. You don't have to resort to violence. If someone is saying something and you feel you are offended by the thing and you feel what the person is saying uh, is an hate speech, there are better ways to address such issue instead of resorting to violence. And in order to be able to counter ideas, in order to be able to prove your point, you have to engage in a dialogue, you have to engage in a debate in order to be able to prove your point instead of resorting to, to violence because people are trying to express their freedom of speech. You know, Douglas Murray always talk about this, about uh, Islamist fundamentalists, about Islamist extremism, that you don't have to uh, 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 resort to violence or resort to killing when someone says something against you, against your religion, or against uh, the founder of your religion, uh, there should be no double standard. Other religion like Christianity, uh, other religious, other religion like Christianity are also uh, criticized. So why should Islam uh, be a different game? Why should Islam be different? So people have to express their views and give their perspective on things. You can try to uh, take away their freedom just because you don't feel okay and you living in a western society living in a society you have no right not to be offended you have no right not to be offended if you are living in a society where there is two or three five ten hundred thousand people you have no right not to be offended by all means someone is going to say something to Someone is going to say something to offend you. And if you feel offended by what the person say, you don't have to be offended. You don't have to call it uh, an hate speech. You don't have to say the person is becoming uh, Islamophobic. If you are offended by what the person say or by the person's idea, you have to counter what the person say by uh, by engaging in a dialogue, by uh, bringing more, by bringing a better ideas that can, you know, counter what the person say to prove your point. Because... Violence have no place uh, in Western society. Violence have no place in the society. And I, for one, I totally believe that the clash of different ideas brings solution to a lot of problems. And I believe for a society to be able to flourish, for a society to be able to move forward, there need to be uh, 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 there need to be exchange of idea, and exchange of idea can lead to a clash of different ideas. People give their opinion, people give their views of different topic can help bring better solution to a lot of problem. And Douglas always talk about this that a lot of people are migrating right now to uh, to Europe to uh, UK, British, and those people coming into Europe, coming into British, are coming with their own imported values, coming with their own imported uh, religion, coming with their own imported culture, with their own imported tradition. So if you are coming into a country that is not your country, the, the first thing you need to do is you have to be able to adjust yourself to accommodate uh, the host country culture, to accommodate the host country religion, to accommodate the host country value system. We all know every country has its own identity. 
the identity of an Islamic country is different from uh, the identity of, of, of British, the identity of Europe country. Just like we know British identity is rooted in its culture, it's rooted in its belief, it's rooted in its tradition, it's rooted in its value system. So you come into British, you come into Europe, you come into UK, you have to be able to adjust yourself to accommodate their culture you have to be able to adjust yourself to accommodate their tradition you have to be able to adjust yourself to accommodate their value system you don't have to pick offense because someone says something and you don't feel okay with it you have no right not to be offended by all means you have to by all means you'll be offended if you are living in a western society if you are living in, in an organized society and you don't have to resort to violence because there are better ways to address such issue. You don't have to say uh, because someone said something and you feel what the person say is against your tradition, it's against your belief, it's against it's against uh, 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 your value system. You don't have to resort to violence. You have to counter what the person say by coming up with better ideas, by coming up with better ideas, by engaging in a debate, by engaging in a dialogue in order to be able to uh, prove your point to the person instead of you give, uh, giving the person a life threat or uh, uh, threatening to kill the person. I feel that is totally unacceptable. Seeing this incident about Charlie Addo, I believe uh, the government should come, out, come up with a better policy in order to be able to address such uh, th this kind of issue like extremism. I believe better policy should be set in place in order to be able to counter this type of issue otherwise some other people are going to take it as an opportunity to as an opportunity to also condemn condemn some people that they feel they are going against their belief and meanwhile europe british is not a muslim country if you feel you are not okay living in europe you are not okay living uh, uh in british you are not okay living in uk and you feel uh, their tradition don't align with your own tradition I think you can go back to uh, 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 your own country or better go to a Muslim country where their tradition, their culture and their values align with uh, uh, the, uh, the values and the culture of your religion. Because if you want to stay in a country, you have to accept their culture, you have to accept their tradition, you have to accept their value system. You don't have to impose your own culture, your own belief on the people. And I totally relate with Douglas Murray. I would also like to hear your comments. What do you think about uh, the fact and point Douglas have stated? Keep the comments coming. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day.